Fulton County Schools has received a new technology designation that recognizes its national leadership in student privacy protection and data security. Awarded by the Consortium for School Networking, the Trusted Learning Environment seal identifies school systems that demonstrate commitment to ensuring the privacy and security of student data. Only seven school systems nationwide received the TLE seal during its inaugural year. Fulton County Schools, where students come first. Good morning, sorry for the interruption. If you are a STEM parent, volunteer, or STEM business partner, and you have a few minutes to spare at the end of your time here, we'd love to have you come up to the atrium for a picture at 10 o'clock. Again, that's STEM parent volunteers or STEM business partners to the atrium at 10 o'clock for a group picture. Thank you. We are having a um, STEM challenge today, and we are having to build and create and design catapults. So we learned a little bit about the history of a catapult and we learned it came from what time period? The medieval time period. And we learned also about how they use catapults on, in modern day uh, technology and advancements. And so the kids are having design and we're testing for accuracy and precision. So we are doing a STEM project. We are supposed to be going against the other class and we have to make a catapult to hit the middle of a target and we have to make it accurate and precise. Well, we're actually having a STEM project, and is where we have to build a catapult that can launch into an um, that it can launch into like a target into the um, middle, and we're trying to get ac we're trying to get the accurate and put, um, and we're trying to get the accurate effect. We are um, creating a, a catapult to hit a target, a 45 degree angle target. So um, we have to build our catapult so many times just so it can be exactly perfect. Um, so we're using math. We talked a lot about um, angles. We learned that if, if, for, if we can get our, our ping pong balls to go at a 45 degree angle, it would be more accurate and more precise. We're talking about force and motion in science and the integration of how we can use our math and science um, background to help us make the most accurate and precise catapult. So far, we're running low on supplies, and we're doing a little okay. Uh, we are having a couple difficulties with um, having, we're using a little too much tape on some stuff because the tape, for some reason, keeps coming off a bit. But um, I think the spoon might just be a, tilted a little too um, far, so it might hit down too low. But other than that, we're pretty good. We're having a lot of fun. Um, my, ch my students are talking a lot about I have to go back and make a better design. Um, my students are talking about two heads are better than one. We use a lot of collaboration, a lot of teamwork, um, and they're having a great time, and I think they're learning a lot. I like most about the project is just how we get to work together and um, uh, meeting new people, getting to know them better. You get to research um, other ways how you can use catapults, and sometimes you get to see videos on it. What's most fun for me is having hands-on building a small catapult with a team. Collaborating with other team members and seeing their ideas. We use technology by, um, by researching um, catapults so we have an idea of what we can build. Um, I like science because it's kind of fun. Um, it's kind of fun to learn what, some, like what learn to, uh, life is about. My, per my personal is biology because it's, you get to learn about the life that you live in. So STEM Day is just one piece of our um, STEM program and um, through STEM Day students, um, first of all, they, they listen to a piece of literature, usually a book read by me, and it ties in with a challenge that they will engage in for the next two um, to two and a half hours. Um, for today we were in a fifth grade classroom and the students were um, building catapults. I mean, they did their research, find out that at the time period where the first catapults uh, were found. They used their math with, the, with angles and projection, um, you know, velocity, so, make, so incorporating all of the um, STEM, science, technology, engineering, math.
With the Fulton County Schools mobile app, your school district comes alive at the touch of a button. It allows you to easily connect to the learning and parent portal or navigate through current news and events. You can easily check out the latest updates with social media and quickly retrieve contact information for schools. You can also view a comprehensive calendar of events, get lunch schedules for your school, connect with the superintendent, and more. It's your school district available at your fingertips. I'm Allie Baker and I'm the STEM lab teacher at River Eaves Elementary. I work with the entire school. They come see me in the STEM lab, so I'm able to give them an outside experience that some of them don't typically get in the classroom. We get to do different STEM challenges, which STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and math, and so it gives them an exciting new look to different op job options later on. And, and I relate my lessons off of what they're learning in the classroom, so they get a more in-depth experience of what they are learning and get to do an activity that goes along with it. We prepare them for jobs in the engineering field by having them design different projects and they get to build and complete it. They realize how it doesn't always work the first time and even in the real world that that's a possibility. I've had different, a variety of engineers come into my STEM lab and talk to them about their job and how it relates to STEM, so I try to pull in all different types of engineers to come to the room. In my third grade class, they're learning about pollution. So this is just gonna be the introduction to their activity. They will eventually create a water filter to try to clean water, and today is gonna to be all about what is pollution, the introduction to it, having them use the iPads to do some research about it. They're preparing to create water filters, which will happen another day, so they're focusing on the research and getting their background knowledge so that they're ready to go more in depth the next class. In the STEM lab, we use a lot of technology. I have a board that I use to show them the videos before we usually start a lesson. I also have 15 iPads that I use every day. It's a, I'm able to have two iPads per th three or four students, so it helps them be able to do more research, the more iPads, the more hands-on that they can do. I think technology helps impact the education because it gives them a different point of view. Sometimes in the classroom they get to use different technology that they may not have at home, or they may just never be exposed to and it helps them learn a lot more information and a lot quicker sometimes on a topic trying to do research. I do have a very creative class. There's been a lot of aha moments. Sometimes when we are learning about a new app on an iPad, the students will be able to help other students out more than I can help out. They are, seem to pick it up a lot faster. I do try to do my research on how the app works, but they're really good at just with a problem, trying to figure out on their own and in any different way that they can. In my lessons, what I like to do with to add in the math, I with the upper grades, the, there's always a budget. For their supplies, when there's a problem, they have a certain amount of money to use. And it's great because I have paper money that they use and they find it so exciting that they actually get to use real money. When they get changed, they're understanding how that money process works in the real world. The students seem to really love the STEM lab. Sometimes group work is a little hard for them to get used to, but when they see the projects that they can create when they work together, they get really excited when it works. Sometimes they think it's not going to work, and sometimes it doesn't the first time, but when they get it to work, they get very excited and they're ready to go. As far as equipment, students are always using iPads to get their research done, usually in one day, and then they'll be able to build their project the next day. We use a lot of reusable materials, such as popsicle sticks and straws, to do our building. It always depends on the activity of what materials I need to get. I think STEM is a really great program. I've seen a lot of excitement from the students at first with the unknown, not knowing what it is. They're a little nervous or hesitant, but they've really come out of their shells to try harder and learning it's okay if it's not working the first time. And I think that's one of the most important lessons they learn in my room, that to not always get upset the first time it fails, but to know that when they try again, there's always another way to do it. STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. STEM is important because it really has the students thinking in a different way. It allows them to be more creative and think to solve a problem and not just pencil paper kind of way. There, It's more hands-on and gives the students a great opportunity to learn to work in groups and to go more in depth. It gives them a great opportunity to work in groups and get more creative in how they're thinking to solve problems. 
The principal and the administrative staff have been very supportive with STEM. They are in my room every day checking on me, making sure if I need anything, wanting to see how it's going. Every time I send out a tweet of what's going on in my room, they will retweet it to make it known. They love finding out what the students are working on. The Georgia STEM certification has benefited our students through, um, through many ways. First of all, it um, confirms you know, to our students that our teachers provide them with the most engaging and higher level um, instructional opportunities. Um, it also lets the students um, um, benefit from the recognition at, at the state level, even national level, uh, that they are, they, they are participating in um, opportunities and instructional um, teaching that will um, benefit them for their careers in the future. And, and through STEM, our students are introduced to numerous occupations and, and even those that, are, that haven't been created just to allow them to start to, to think and forecast about how they can use STEM um, in, in the future. Hi, I'm Principal Lisa Nash and you are watching FCS TV. Fulton County Schools is committed to providing an environment that promotes healthy living for students. In fact, First Lady Michelle Obama has honored three Fulton County Schools with the Let's Move Award. High Point Elementary School, Lake Windward Elementary School, and Stonewall Tail Elementary School. The honor is one of the nation's top physical education and physical activity distinctions for K-12 schools. To get the award, a school must have met significant benchmarks in five areas, physical education, physical activity before and after school, physical activity during school, staff involvement, and family and community engagement. In addition, students must have at least 60 minutes of physical activity. A total of 544 schools from 41 states and Washington, D.C. were recognized with a Let's Move Award. Fulton County Schools, where students come first. I think technology and education is very important. Um, it helps in so many, so many different ways. It allows our students to, one, um, have instruction that's personalized to their needs. Students can, um, I know in my classroom I use things like ScootPad um, and Edmodo where I can push out assignments to meet the individual needs of my particular students. On Edmodo I put them into um, small groups and so I can do a video lesson for my students. They can get that personalized instruction from me even though I'm working with a different group at that particular time. So I can have three different groups of children in my classroom with three distinct needs and they all are getting a video lesson from me at the same exact time that meets their needs. Well with me I've noticed um, well, with the, my Chromebooks, I have Chromebooks in my classroom, I have uh, Microsoft Surface Pros, I have iPads, and I have the desktop computers. Each of those devices that I have in my classroom, the Chromebooks, the iPads, the desktops, and um, the Chromebooks, all of those devices have certain strengths that other devices don't have. My Chromebooks run on Chrome, and a lot of the apps that we use like um, I read and Redbird, those apps that personalize instruction, run better on the Chrome. Um, they are mobile, the students can pick them up and take them either to work with me um, at my kidney table or they can take it to a, one of the other student tables to work with a group. My uh, iPads running certain app, apps like TouchCast, TuneCast, um, TuneCast um, some of these other apps that are just app, the iPad only um, or iOS only device or apps, those students can benefit from those devices and they can be moved and used in other areas of the building. So those I think are make a big impact on allowing the kids to use their to use their voice, connect with the world um, beyond our classroom. 
One thing that um, I, my students are noticing are things like reaching beyond our classroom. The second grade classes here were all doing a PBL on bees and our students were able to Skype with um, the Maryland Agricultural Center and up there in Maryland outside of Baltimore and so we were able to learn things about bees from a real expert and we were able to learn from someone there in Maryland and I think otherwise we would not have that valuable tool. She was able to show us real bees in a beehive and the kids got to see the bees coming in and out. She showed someone in the bee suit and using the um, smoke and doing all those things that we normally couldn't do in real life and ask questions of that person. Our students with personalized learning and using technology to help, uh, help them learn is that they get to do things that are just, that meets their needs. So we have students that might have a certain weakness in one particular area. And using some of the, um, some of our websites and our apps and technology such as Redbird, ScoopPad, um, some of those apps that we have, I can send a, um, send out a specific skill test video, um, an assignment on those platforms that meets each particular child's needs. And otherwise, I don't think I could do that with um, just paper, pencil, or hands-on. It's just, there's not enough of me, one teacher with 20 kids in a classroom to meet those needs. Technology can be a distraction for our students. I do agree on that, and I'm one of those people. I'm pretty well almost one-to-one -one device in my classroom. And there are times where students do have a hard time trying to do something without technology. Um, but I think we need to always try to find a balance and trying to have students like reading and trying to read a book um, that they hold in just their hands and realize that that's, that's a good book too, not just a book that's online. So I do try to balance um, paper, pencil, small group, uh, manipulatives, with the technology, because technology is not a end all be all. Founded in 1871, the Fulton County School System is one of the oldest and largest school districts in Georgia. With a focus on student achievement and a commitment to continual improvement, Fulton has earned a reputation as a premier school system. We teach over 30 pathways, which consist of about 180 courses in career technical education. And that's everything from agriculture science to law and justice to engineering. This is a generation of tech savvy students. Um, and we are providing them with the tools that they need to personalize their learning. And we're providing those tools for our teachers as they strengthen um, their teaching practices in order to really personalize learning and meet our, each and every kid where they are. The district is led by Superintendent Dr. Jeff Rose, who is responsible for the leadership, administration, and management of approximately 96,000 students. So your job is to be a visionary for each and every student that you come into contact with. It's very difficult because sometimes you don't want to be a visionary. You want to, you want to dwell in reality. Well, our kids need more than that. So as we sometimes get dragged into reality, I ask you to be a visionary and focus on your relationships with kids. Bolton is also one of the largest charter systems in Georgia. With an effective board of education and strong leadership across the district, Fulton continues to achieve. 224 teachers in Fulton have achieved national board certification since 2001. This represents almost 9% of all national board certified teachers in Georgia. Fulton's SAT scores continue to exceed the state and national average, with schools ranking among the highest scoring schools in Georgia. According to the College Board, Fulton has more schools with high SAT performance than any other district in Georgia. The Fulton County School System is one of the most unique school systems in the nation, providing rigorous academic programs that foster student achievement for all students.
I have been teaching here at River Eve since 2001, uh, but I've been in education since the 1980s, so I've been teaching for quite a while. When I first started teaching uh, in 1989, we didn't have computers in a classroom. I remember we had one computer lab, and students got to go to a computer lab, and I can remember inserting the particular uh, disc for the program that the kids wanted to use. And it was more drill and practice, the drill and kill type things. So I thought it was good for reinforcing um, what the skill that I was working on with my students. But that's all it was, something that I could have done probably with either flashcards or paper pencil. Um, and it really wasn't personalized. All the kids were working on the same skill. Now, um, you know, I've seen where we started getting two or three computers in a classroom. But still, it was the same thing like in the 90s and the early um, you know, 200, uh, you know, 2001 when I came here. We were still doing a lot of the typing on Word, but all the kids were still doing the same assignment or all going to one particular website working on one skill. Now I'm seeing we're using different programs that can actually place students um, where they're at and then encourage them to move on. We have some students, I know in my particular classroom, that are working on the third grade level. They're only second grade students, but they're reading and writing and learning on the third grade level. So I can give them skills that they need to continue their learning but yet I can go and work with some of my weaker students and give them skills that they are missing, that they need. But then I can take some of these things that my students are working on and share it with my community and share it with their parents. You know, we can go and, like during our STEM challenge today, the students were um, logging into Edmodo and doing their research and then their putting together their challenge, and after they got their challenge to test their catapults that they were building, we actually videotaped and put that on to Remind, which is an app on our iPads, and sent that out to parents. So our parents that weren't able to be here and see what the students were doing, they got to still be a part of that. And the children love being able to share instantly with their parents what they're doing, and their grandparents who might not even be in the state of Georgia. In the early part of my career, I always looked at students and their learning style, and I always thought of there's the kinesthetic learner, the kids that need to touch. And then I always looked, there's you know, the child that um, needed to, they, they needed auditory, they needed to be told things auditory, and all those other type of learning styles. I think those are, those are still here in play, but I think with the technology that we have today, we can still meet those needs um, with the technology because I am noticing that some of my more kinesthetic touching students, they are drawn more to my Surface and my iPads that the kids actually can touch and manipulate things on the screen. And those that need to hear things auditory, I'm noticing on our websites and our apps that have that speaking capability, they will always, they have a tendency to go and touch that, the microphone or the um, speaker part and have those apps speak to them to help them learn those skills. Um, those students that learn best from watching and seeing, they can still see the videos that I put together or find on the internet and they can see something being put together or seeing a problem being worked out in math or seeing a science concept.